pretty much any time that you are going to do a, um, a problem that has forces in it, you are going to need to draw a free body diagram. A free body diagram is a diagram of all the forces acting on an object. So we're going to start with the forces acting on this dictionary. So what you do is you draw a bare bones picture of what's going on. We have the dictionary. It is located right there. I'm going to draw a dot. This dot represents the center of mass of the object. And as advertised before, there are two things that I'm not going to define. One of them is center of mass. We're not going to define that today. For today, you can put a dot that's near the middle of the object. You can say, there's where I'm going to put all my forces from. It's good enough for today. We're going to define center of mass at a later date. Please give me a force acting on the dictionary right now. Britt. Wait. Sorry, say again. Weight was another word for weight, Leah. That would be the dimensions. I agree with that, but I'm looking for the word that is synonymous for weight. Mitch. Uh, force of gravity. The force of gravity. So the force of gravity or the weight, and what is the direction of the force of gravity, Michelle? Yes. The force of gravity is that. While you are drawing your free body diagrams, you need to be thinking, for example, when we look at this, and we look at the free body diagram versus the object that is right here, David, what would be happening to the dictionary if that were the complete free body diagram? It would be falling. It would be going through the desk, right? Brittany, is the dictionary going through the desk? No, no it is not. Something is preventing that. Therefore, what must be true in our free body diagram? Christina. We've just said that the force of gravity is acting down. Therefore, if that were the only thing in there, the, the dictionary would be going through the desk. There has to be a force acting upward, right, to prevent this from happening. This force, which is acting upward, is F sub n. And F sub n stands for the force normal, or the normal force. In order to understand what the word force, what the force normal is, you need to understand what the word normal means. If you could tell me what the word normal means in your math class, it's a word that has been used in your math class. It's a mathematical term, Joshua. It means perpendicular. The force normal is perpendicular to the surface. That's what the word normal means. So the first thing you need to know is that it is perpendicular to the surface. The second thing is that a surface cannot pull. A surface can't grab hold of something and pull. So a force normal is always a push. So the force normal is the word normal means it's perpendicular to the surface, and it is always a push. This is a complete free body diagram for the dictionary as it is right now. Now, I'm going to change that free body diagram. Please watch carefully. Did I do to the dictionary, Danielle? <laughs> ah, no, bless you. It, ha it has inertia, yes? I tried to push it. What did, what did I do when I tried to push it? Yes, I agree. I tried to push it. Bless you. Again, David. You applied a force. I applied a force. I apologize profusely. <laughs> Clearly, I have offended thee. <laughs> Between all the sneezes, I had a hard time hearing everything that you were saying. David, it's okay. <laughs> everything is going to be okay. Daniela, are we okay? I apologize again. Yes, you applied a force. This force that you apply is called F sub A. I'm sorry, that I applied. You did not do the applying. This is called F sub A, the force applied. 
If you are looking for a definition of the, of the force applied, it is the applied force. I don't really have a definition for it other than it's the force that you apply. It's the applied force. If this were the complete free body diagram for the dictionary, what would be happening to the dictionary? Mm, it would be, it would move. It would be accelerating to the right, it would be moving to the right. Is the dictionary, Brittany, accelerating to the right when I push on it? Here we go. No. no. Therefore, something must preventing, be preventing this from happening. There is a force acting to the left, which is called the force of friction. F sub little f, the force of friction. And the definition of that is... Not today. We are going to spend an entire class period defining friction and talking about it and working with it. So I'm not going to try to do that today. What you need to be able to identify for friction is that in this particular case, it was there because, or it needed to be there because it was preventing the object from moving. That's good enough for today. Um, also, if in the problem it states like there is a rough surface that should indicate that, that you have clearly have friction. Okay, I'm now going to change the free body diagram again. Our free body diagram. Please give me one quickly. Um, force of gravity. What direction? Down. Down. Are you sure? Down. Down the incline or just straight down? Down. Down. Remember, the force of gravity is always down. Don't get confused because there's an incline. It's always down. If you drop an object, it goes down. So the force of gravity is down. Other forces in our free body diagram, Mr. Headley. No force. What's the direction on that? Okay. Remember, it's it's a push, so the force normal needs to be perpendicular to the incline and upward. I did hear you. I just had to draw it that way. The force normal perpendicular to the surface and a push, therefore perpendicular and up. If this were the complete free body diagram, Krauss. What would be happening to the dictionary? Um, it would be moving to the left. It would be accelerating slash moving down the incline. <clears throat> True. Brittany, is it accelerating down the incline? The dictionary, look at it. No. No? Therefore, Nick? Uh, there's a force to the right. To the right and up. It's up and parallel to the surface here. So the force of friction is going to look like that. That is a complete free body diagram of what's going on here. Again, anytime you have forces, which you're going to need to do before you can really start working with them, is to draw a free body diagram. 